Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All coming to you from the chiropractor again. It's a busy day, but I wanted to do a quick video to talk about something that's not sexy like S3XY. <laughs> so it doesn't have to do with Tesla's vehicles, but it does have to do with 2023 and what could be happening with their mega packs and how their mega packs could go from being a relatively small amount of profit. They make a little bit, what I've heard is about 5% profit, you know, net profit on their mega packs to a lot bigger number than that. Uh, and there's a couple of factors at play. Um, number one is, well, <laughs> a bunch of factors at play. They, they have a huge backlog of orders and that backlog is only going to grow uh, primarily because they are dealing with a lot of extra new energy demand. So if you look in particular at Europe and maybe Germany in particular, because of circumstances with other parties who decided to get into military actions and, and the fact that, you know, Germany is suddenly like, oh crap, we can't buy gas from them anymore. So what are we going to do? So there's, you know, there's, they're rolling out things very aggressively as is a lot of Europe, as, as is China. Uh, as is uh, Australia, as is the United States, et cetera, et cetera. People are really starting to make a big push towards renewable energy sources, primarily wind and solar. And wind and solar are great, except that it's a lovely day right now. It's a little bit chilly, but it's a great day to generate you know, solar power and wind power because it's a little bit windy too in the state of Georgia. But that's going to tail off at night because there's no more sun and the wind is intermittent as well. So what do you need with these to balance balance them out is you need big batteries. And basically Tesla's big battery thing that the mega pack is a, a box with a lot of batteries in it. So that's fantastic. But the problem is until very recently, Tesla has been in a situation where they have been unable to collect enough extra batteries. The car, you know, manufacturer was bigger profit margins. It was where they were putting their focus. Obviously, you've got a lot of factories that they are building to build cars, etc. But now they have an, they've got the Nevada factory, of course, that they've been working with Panasonic on. They've also got the Lath Lathrop, Lathrop. <laughs> anyway, they've got that factory that's coming online. And even more importantly, I think for the mega packs, they've struck a deal with CATL out of China for batteries. And the, the sort of major switch that has happened is that they are going from an undersupply of batteries. And in particular, they've been using the uh, NMC, you know, nickel, metal, nickel, <laughs> manganese, cobalt. There we go. Anyway, they've been using that type of lithium ion battery in the past, but that has a very high energy density. That's what's used in this car, the Model Y that I'm in right now. Works great. You know, you can charge it really quickly. You can discharge it really quickly. And it's very good for high performance applications. And it has a very high energy density, which means that it doesn't take up a lot of space so that the car itself can weigh a little bit less and have volumetrically a little bit less room for the same size battery pack. Neither, none of these things affect a mega pack. The mega pack can be adjusted in size, and in fact, probably. I haven't had access to the insides of these, but you know, generally speaking, these things, a lot of the space is devoted to things like cooling and, and you know, the fins on the back to, to do cooling and to the, the battery management system and the electronics and all of that stuff. So those things are inside of a mega pack. And so there's probably some extra space anyway. So if you have a lower energy density battery, you could still probably fit it in there. And if you need to, you just adjust the size a little bit, right? So if you've got a megawatt hour of battery that's in this in this mega pack, you could adjust the size a little bit as you sell it to the new places because each of these is being installed on a kind of a one-off basis. I have a feeling that they'll do like their um, they'll do like their superchargers eventually, and probably try to come up with a way of doing it. In fact, they they do this already per thing. But anyway, the unit size, right? If you increase the area by a, a fraction, like a couple of percent, that's not going to cause any people problems. You just tell them ahead of time this is how much land you need for this number of mega packs. But anyway, so lower energy density slightly larger volume, potentially slightly more weight. None of those things have any real effect on the mega pack. So they can go full lithium iron phosphate LFP batteries, which is what they're pretty much doing in China already. I think except for their performance models, pretty much all of the batteries that they're using in China and thus exporting around the world since China is the place that they do exports 
is LFP batteries as opposed to, you know, the ones with cobalt and manganese and things like that and nickel especially. So those, that actually creates a different structure. The uh, LFP batteries also have a huge advantage, which is that you can charge them to a hundred percent and discharge them to very near zero percent without battery degradation. I have definitely seen that in this car. I've tried to take good care of it, but you know, generally I charge it to like 75% or something, but during road trips, charge it to 100%. The battery has definitely degraded in the amount of miles that I can drive over time. And that's, you know, it's expected, but that happens less with LFP. So even with cars, while you initially get less range than you do with the, with the other variety of battery, over time, it doesn't degrade as much and you can charge it to 100%, so you get more effective usability out of it. So there's huge advantages to LFP just in terms of cars, but in terms of mega packs, that's just a no-brainer, right? You don't care about any of these, you know, high performance things. You don't care about charging and discharging at very, very high rates of speed. Uh, you can you can utilize these batteries in a more kind of basic way. And even if the grid cuts out and you have to cut in the battery power immediately, you're not talking about taxing the entire thing at a very aggressive rate for long periods of time. So, <clears throat> so these batteries are the perfect use case for LFP. And it just so happens that CATL is masters of producing LFP batteries. So Tesla is moving from utilizing spare batteries that they had left over from working on their vehicles to a more dedicated source of creating this these battery packs. And at the same time, they're moving to battery packs that, at least ostensibly, it looks like this is what's happening. It looks like in December, they started to make this changeover. They're switching over to battery packs that are that uh, have LFP basis, so they can be charged and discharged up to like four or five thousand cycles. So many years of cycling through this, which means that they're very very robust. So fantastic! You don't have to replace these things every five years or something, even if they're being used on a very aggressive basis for your power supply. So that also is a huge advantage, and they should have a lot of extra batteries lying around. So again, you know, you've got contracts that they're starting to work out that are specifically for the mega packs all of which means and at the same time they've raised the rates for the mega packs uh, over time so they've actually become more expensive because the demand is so high and they've got i think a close to a two-year waiting list on their mega packs which means that they've got a lot of you know, a lot of desire for these things. And if the demand goes up, you can raise the prices, basic supply and demand things. So at the same time that they can raise prices, they are starting to produce more of these things. They can do it with a cheaper and more efficient battery chemistry that's more robust, which means they don't have as much servicing they need to do. And they don't have uh, the lifetime issues. So warranty wise, they don't have to deal with it. All of these things, you know, all of the above. So they, they are looking at going from just a couple of percent of, um, profit, uh, net profit for these, these mega packs to potentially, you know, starting to look at 30, 40% plus, uh, profit margins on these, on these mega packs. And while again, it's not sexy, it's not the most, you know, it's like, who cares about this stuff? They just sit in a field someplace that nobody really sees. But we did see those guys in Hawaii when we did the helicopter tour and it was pretty cool to see them down there. They don't take up a lot of space, but they are absolutely necessary to the world transitioning to sustainable energy because sustainable energy, unless we get fusion going or unless uh, fission, nuclear fission comes back into style again, which it could because there are smaller, um, you know, fission-based uh, nuclear power plants that are starting to become, that are starting to get developed. And so those might actually bring fission back. But anyway, if, if assuming that a lot of the future power is going to be wind and solar, it's going to have to have batteries. <clears throat> and the batteries it's not just the physical batteries. You might say like, well, anybody can do this, right? You just get a bunch of batteries, you stick them in a box. There are a whole bunch of things that go with a lot of batteries together. As it turns out, Tesla's really good at managing this stuff. You've got thermal management issues. You've got, um, you know, cooling issues, I guess that's thermal, thermal management. You've also got charging and discharging properly to make sure that you maintain the quality of the batteries. You've got failure rate issues, right? So that you deal with that kind of stuff. There's lots and lots of, of issues that go with that. And then of course, you've got on top of that, which Tesla has great experience with, they've developed the auto bidder software, which means that they've got something that automatically is good at purchasing power at low rates and then selling it back at high rates. <clears throat> and so these, these stations 
what they can do is in addition to using solar and wind power to charge up these batteries is even overnight if there's not a lot of use and power is cheap they can actually draw power off the grid to charge up these batteries and then when there's a there's an over demand you know even with solar and stuff like that maybe it's a cloudy day or something or it's the winter time and people are accessing a lot for heat or for other usage they can then pull it out of there when the demand causes the price of electricity to be very high and that allows these companies and this is this is a fact this isn't something that's a, a guess this is already happening is it allows the companies that are utilizing these power sources to be able to make a lot of money on these batteries even excluding the fact that they're able to get you know free energy off of the uh, off of the environment. So there are a lot of factors involved here that could cause the mega pack to become a pretty huge profit driver in the next one to two years, assuming that Tesla can ramp them up adequately so that they can make enough to start to eat into this demand. I think the demand is going to be there and there's not a lot of competition in this space as opposed to electric vehicles, which is starting to heat up, right? There's there's more and more competition for that. As opposed to that, for mega packs, there's really not that much. And again, it's not as simple as people think. There's a lot of electronics, a lot of software, a lot of knowledge and understanding has to go into creating these things. And so there's not that many companies that are going to be able to do that and to be able to put out the cash outlay to make it all happen and on and on and on. So anyway, it's not sexy, but it could be a massive profit driver. So, you know, again, not financial analyst, not financial advice, but it is something worth considering as you consider the future of Tesla and potentially investing in them, you know, do your own research, all of that stuff. All right. Anyway, I hope everybody has a lovely Monday. I am off to go do some teaching and some research and stuff. So everybody have a great day. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.